Hello everyone and welcome to Bathroom Brews. In the spirit of giving, I wanted to gift you lovely nerds with not one, but two deck techs for the commander I most wanted to build in 2023, Araxa, Empress of Mars. She's a 4 mana, 2 and 2 red, for a 5-4 legendary creature alien warrior with trample and battle cry, and she has paradox. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, create a 2-2 red alien warrior creature token. So instead of one $50 deck tech like I usually do, I will also be providing you with a PDH deck tech. If you're curious about PDH and want to learn more about the format, check out my previous PDH content linked somewhere on screen here, and you can go to PDH Homebase linked in the video description below. As always, the decks will be linked in the video description below, and if you want more content like this, give this video a like, it's an easy way to really help out the channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. The game plan for this deck is straightforward. We want to cast as many cards from anywhere but our hand. We don't care if it's from Exile, the Graveyard, or from the top of our library. I counted a total of 9 mechanics that allow us to cast spells from Exile. Adventures, Cascade, Discover, Escape, Flashback, Foretell, Impulse, not technically keyworded but we'll get into that, Rebound, and Suspend. Of these 9 mechanics, Cascade and Discover are the best. Cascade lets us cheat on the mana cost of a card by casting them for free. Discover does the same thing as Cascade, except if we don't cast the card we can put it into our hand. Unsurprisingly, there aren't a ton of cheaply costed Cascade and Discover commons for the PDH deck, with only 5 Discover and Cascade cards in total. And of those 5, only 2 of them will see play in the EDH version of the deck. Boarding Party, which is a 6 mana 6-3 six, human pirate with haste and Cascade, and then Hidden Volcano, which is a land that's a cave that we can pay 5 in a red, tap it, sacrifice it, and discover 4. While the EDH version of the deck does have a total of 10 Cascade and Discover cards, of the 10, 3 stand above the rest due to the value they provide. Throws of Chaos is a 4 mana sorcery that has Cascade and Retrace. So with Retrace, we get a cast it from our graveyard getting us an alien, and then the Cascade trigger gets us another alien. Call Forth the Tempest is an 8 mana sorcery for 5 red 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 that has Cascade Cascade, and Call Forth the Tempest deals damage to each creature your opponents control equal to the total mana value of other spells you've cast this turn. While this is expensive, we do get a Cascade twice, and it gives us a potential board wipe. And finally, we have Into the Time Vortex, which is a 5 mana sorcery for 4 and a red that has Cascade and Rebound. Quick rules note, Rebound does specify it has to be cast from your hand, so if you cheat this out from the graveyard later on or you Cascade into it, unfortunately you won't get that second part of the spell. Fortel was first introduced in Keldheim, and reminds me a bit of Morphs. You can pay 2 mana to foretell a card by putting it into exile, and then paying less mana for it later on. This is great because we're casting the spell from exile, and our opponents really can't interact with face down cards in exile. In the PDH deck, I included all of the common red and colorless foretell cards. There's Demon Bolt, which is a 3 mana instant that deals 4 damage to target creature or planeswalker, and we can cast it from foretell for 1 red. There's Dwarven Reinforcements, which is a 4 mana sorcery that we can create 2 2 1 red Dwarf Berserker creature tokens, and the foretell cost of 1 in a red. And then finally, Scorn Effigy, which is a 3 mana 2 3 with foretell cost 0, which means we get to cast it from exile for free. For the EDH deck, we cut Dwarven Reinforcements and we put in Dual Strike. It's a 2 mana instant that costs red red. When you cast your next instant or sorcery spell with converted mana cost 4 or less this turn, copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy, and you can foretell it for 1 red. And Impending Flux. This is a 3 mana sorcery for 2 and a red, that is Paradox. Impending Flux deals X damage to each opponent and each creature they control, where X is 1 plus the number of spells you've cast from anywhere other than your hand this turn, and you can foretell it for 1 red red. Dual Strike is a cheap way to copy spells, and Impending Flux is more creature and player removal. Quick rules note, if you copy a Cascade spell with Dual Strike, such as Throws of Chaos, you won't get the additional Cascade trigger. That's because Cascade, like I said earlier, is a cast trigger and you're not casting a new copy of it. If a card says you may cast a copy of the spell, then you do get the Cascade trigger. Alright, let's flash back to flashback. That was kind of cheesy. I'm leaving that in. Now unsurprisingly, Flashback has one of the deepest card pools since it is 22 years old at this point. Unlike the other mechanics on this list, the Flashback cost of a card is generally more expensive than its normal casting cost. The most notable example of this would be Faithless Looting, which is 1 mana sorcery, draw 2 cards and discard 2 cards, with a Flashback cost of 2 and a red. But despite this increase in cost, it's still powerful in both 60 card formats and in EDH slash PDH. Now some flashback cards care if they're cast from the graveyard, such as Ignite the Future, 
giving you additional effects. If you can cast it from your graveyard without paying its flashback cost, you get all the benefit without the increased cost. Since most of these effects tend to be on rares, there isn't a ton of overlap between decks. The most notable overlaps though are Faceless Looting, which I just went over, and then Lava Dart, a one mana instant that deals one damage to any target, and then you can flash it back by sacrificing a mountain. It might seem odd to include this, but the cheap flashback cost makes it an easy include, so we sack a mountain and we get a 2-2. The last mechanic I really want to go over here is Impulse Draw. This isn't a named mechanic like the others mentioned before, but a nickname that comes from the card Act on Impulse. This is one of the mechanics that has the most overlap between the two decks, thanks to the general rarity of Impulse Draw being pretty low. The first cards that came to mind were Reckless Impulse, which is a 2-mana sorcery for 1 and a red that you exile the top 2 cards of your library until the end of your next turn you may play those cards, and Ren's Resolve, which is the same exact card, it's 2-mana sorcery, 1 and a red, exile the top 2 cards of your library, until your next turn you may play those cards. Tavern Brawler is a 3-mana legendary enchantment background for 2 and a red that says commander creatures you own have, at the beginning of your upkeep, exile the top card of your library, this creature gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is that card's mana value, you may play that card this turn. So this is a great way to get repeatable impulse draw at the beginning of our turn. If we hit a land, it does kinda suck, but we can still play that land, even though we don't get any paradox triggers from it. And then finally, Dark Dweller Oracle. This is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two Goblin Shaman for 1 or red, that you can pay 1, sack a creature, exile a top card of your library, you may play that card this turn. This was actually a rare back in Corset 2019 and got downshifted all the way to common. Pretty wild. The biggest difference between the EDH and PDH impulse draw packages is the repeatability. This isn't a bad thing, just something to keep in mind. I want to quickly touch on the core differences between the PDH and the EDH deck. Because of PDH's smaller card pool, there are some mechanics that I included that I didn't need to in the EDH version of the deck. Those being Rebound and Suspend. Okay, I do have one Rebound card, but it also has Cascade, so that doesn't count. The Rebound cards are Faithless Salvaging and Stagger Shock. I wouldn't touch these cards with a 10-foot pull for EDH, but in PDH, they do their jobs well. The best Red Suspend cards are Wheel of Fate and Rousing Refrain, but those are too expensive for a $50 budget, so they're excluded. But in PDH, Gargadon can be a huge threat, and Plunder, it's fine removal here. There are two win conditions for this deck, Combat and Burn. I'm not going to explain how to win with Combat, turn the alien sideways and smash in. The easier way to win, or to get chip damage in, is by using Impact Tremors, which is a 1 and a red for enchantment that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, Impact Tremor deals 1 damage to each opponent, and Woody Roastmaster. This is a 3 mana Citizen Devil, or 2 and a red, that has Alliance. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Woody Roastmaster deals 1 damage to each opponent. So every time we create an alien, we get to deal 1 or 2 damage to each opponent if we have both of these out. If you want to make the deck stronger, you could add more storm cards to the deck. I only included one storm card in the PDH deck and none in the EDH deck because I hate tracking it. If you want to spend a bit more on the deck, there are some easy upgrades I'd suggest. First is Underworld Breach. This is a 2 mana enchantment for 1 and a red that says, each non-land card in your graveyard has escape. The escape cost is equal to the card's mana cost, plus exile 3 other cards from your graveyard. At the beginning of your end step, sacrifice Underworld Breach. Breach allows for some insane combos, even if you don't have a Lion's Eye Diamond on hand. You can check out Commander's Spellbook for a list of all the mono-red Underworld Breach combos. The next upgrade would be Jessica's Will. This is a 3-mana sorcery for 2 and a red, and you choose one. If you control your commander as you cast the spell, you may choose both. Add one red for each card in target opponent's hand. Exile the top 3 cards of your library, you may play them this turn. It acts as both a Ritual and Impulse Draw, which this deck loves. And finally, Perforos, God of the Forge. This is a 4-mana Legendary Enchantment Creature God for 3 and a red that has Indestructible. As long as your devotion to red is less than 5, Perforos isn't a creature. Whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforos deals 2 damage to each opponent. And you can pay 2 and a red, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 0 until end of turn. This is another burn effect that'll help you close out games. So, what do you think of Mono Red Aliens? Do you think Aroxa is too slow as a commander, or just overlooked? Are you going to give PDH a try? I would love to hear your feedback in the comments section below. And if you like this video, just hit that like button, it really helps out. 
Alrighty, have a happy holidays, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.